Three weeks ago, Matt, Uzma and their little boy Ajax swapped the Thames for the Seven and a very small London flat for... <laughs> this lovely house in the Gloucestershire countryside. Talk about night and day. Look at this house. It's so pretty. It's like a doll's house, isn't oh, it? Oh, that's very kind of you. <laughs> it's very different to the flat anyway, isn't very, it? Very, very different from the flat. Can we start by having a look? Look around your grounds. <laughs> Not quite as grand as that, but yes, yeah, of course we can. Not only is there an acre of land, there's also that row of outbuildings making Matt all the more determined to take up carpentry. So, from what I remember, you were thinking home office? Yes, maybe a gym, um, maybe a workshop for me as well. <laughs> well, they've got the space. I found out it's very squeaky, so... Uh... OK, we oh, well, but useful space. Yeah, yeah, currently just a bit of storage for a borrowed lawnmower and a bike that right. I've not ridden since I've got here. <laughs> Keen to start renovating pretty much yesterday. Oh, and gosh, then... it goes on and on, though, doesn't and it? Yeah, and then two pigsties. Matt also wants to install solar panels so they can generate their own power. And there's even more work out the back, from the derelict greenhouses to this half an acre of bramble. Now, I know Usma particularly was very keen on growing veg and that kind of thing. Open to some debate at the moment. Right. Yeah, I kind of want a little football pitch in there instead. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> I think I need to go and have a chat with your lovely wife. Because for what it's worth, being south facing, I think a veg garden is definitely the way to go. Now, Matt has already said about a football pitch. Oh, God. <laughs> That's what we're having That in looks says it all. <laughs> There's going to be a bit of compromising, isn't there? <laughs> and you said about a donkey sanctuary yesterday oh, yeah. as well. Yeah. Oh, hang on a second. A, a, don a donkey sanctuary? <laughs> Being a, lucky enough to have so much space, it would be nice to be able to do something good for animals who are mistreated. Have you actually ever looked after any animals? No, I haven't. <laughs> no. <laughs> And let's not forget, this is the woman who's a little wary of our four-legged friends, especially cows. And the thing is, every time I speak to someone about it, everyone's got a story to tell about how they know someone who died from being attacked by a cow, which is not helpful. So it just adds to my worry. Something Uzma's desperate to overcome. For Ajax's sake, Uzma needs to combat her fears as a phobia of cows or any other animal will hold her back from enjoying this new life, and it could impact on Ajax as well. When you get cows that are quite inquisitive, I just don't know whether they feel threatened or and might, you know, attack. And in certain instances, I've just turned around and walked back. I've taken the liberty of speaking to Ollie, who's got the dairy farm just down the road, and he said, well, Bring her up. <laughs> Come and meet the cows. How does that sound? That sounds really good. I think if I can learn more about it, I think that will it's only going to be positive. So, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Our next stop, Bar House Farm, where Ollie, a third-generation farmer, and his fiancée, Grace, have a nice sideline in making gelato. This is Uzma, who's your new neighbour. Thanks to a herd of 180 cows, all here to help our city girl overcome her bovinophobia. So, thank you so much for um, being our, our cow whisperers Not today. <laughs> <laughs> now, Uzma finds cows uh, a little bit daunting. Does she have reason to be nervous, Grace? I think when I first got to know them, they're just like great big dogs, really. <laughs> um, they're so sweet, yeah. And they love a scratch. Which is all the encouragement I need. Hello, you. Hello. They've got the most wonderful tongues. It's also a perfect opportunity for Uzma to tackle a surprisingly common fear. If you just put your hand out, let her have a sniff, let her come to you. Oh, I can hear a sniff. Lovely, yeah. Oh, oh. And a lick. Oh, lovely lick. <laughs> <laughs> mm. You've, you're obviously oh. wearing wonderful hand cream. Yeah. <laughs> there we are. Wow. Okay. 
So is that the first time you've um, been this close to a cow? Yes, that is the first time I think I've touched a cow, yes. Right. <laughs> and? Oh, it's lovely, yeah. <laughs> it gives me a bit more confidence. Yeah. When I first met Usma, Matt and their young boy Ajax, they were living in a small, cramped flat. They now have a four-bedroom house with plenty of land and views to die for. For the Brandons, an IT consultant and a civil servant, swapping London for rural Gloucestershire is all about giving their son the best possible start. Hey, Jags, do you want to help Mummy pick some flowers? <laughs> flowers. <laughs> but while Matt's a country boy at heart, Usma's had to conquer her fears. Add lockdown plus a brutal winter to the mix, and I'm desperate to know how this city girl is finding country life. Hello, lovely. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Look at you, <laughs> the gardener. You haven't grown all these, have you? Yes, I have, yeah. <laughs> that is so impressive. I'm sure you said to me you weren't very green-fingered. Well, you look very green-fingered to me. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not sure I still am, but um, I'm giving it a go. And this is a woman who's killed pretty much every indoor plant she's ever touched. So how has this transition been for you? Because it's a big one. I, I wouldn't say it's been the easiest to uproot ourselves completely and move to somewhere where we don't have that many connections and it's hard to make them because of lockdown. That's been really difficult. You know, there's a lot of emotion attached to moving. There have been times over the last six months where I have felt a bit down and I've lost my confidence a bit and sort of questioned our move. That's something I'm still battling with. When you say the emotional aspect, is that missing friends, missing routine? I think it's all of those things, isn't it? Those little things are what kind of make your life. Um, so when you, oh God, sorry, I feel a bit emotional and I don't want to cry. I want to give you a hug so badly, I'm sending you a big hug over this <laughs> socially distanced flower bed. <laughs> There's just a lot of happy memories. And it can feel just very lonely sometimes. And um, I think the biggest thing I miss are my friends. Meanwhile, the family member who's had the easiest adjustment to country life is Ajax. Now at nursery school, three days a week, he's thriving. In London, we would, there were very limited things that we could do and we had very limited space, whereas here we have such a variety of, of things. He's, he's talking now, so he, can, he knows the words of the animals, which I think is just amazing. And I know one of your big concerns about moving to the countryside was a lack of diversity um, and of, you know, people thinking you don't fit in. Have you had any experience of that? Not at all, actually, no. I feel a bit silly having, you know, worried about it so much. The community here has done everything they can to sort of help us settle in. No awkward questions, there's no, where are you really from? Um, it's been really lovely. I'm just so admiring of what you've done. Aww. And you've done it for your boy, I know. When I look to the future, I can really see us like having an amazing home here and really loving our life. It's just, that's not where we are yet. But it's, it's a learning curve, isn't it? I love this girl. <laughs> <laughs> While the benefits of country life are easy to see, it takes courage and hard work to start over. So I want to know, do they think it's been worth it? I walk out the door with Ajax to go for a walk and we're surrounded by beautiful countryside and we get to stop and chat with our lovely neighbours. In London, you'd be greeted with, you know, fumes from all the cars and sirens which would scare him and um, you didn't really stop to chat with anybody. 
and long term. With Ajax uh, growing up, it's just going to be brilliant for him to run around the garden. <laughs>